Greetings and welcome once again to LegalizeFreedom.com. I'm your host Greg Moffat and my guest today is Dr. Joseph Tainter of Utah State University. Uh, Joseph is perhaps best known as the author of The Collapse of Complex Societies and amongst various other publications he also co-authored Drilling Down, The Gulf Oil Debacle and Our Energy Dilemma uh, which came out in 2011. Our discussion today will focus on areas covered by both books, uh, specifically the energy that industrial society depends on for its survival and continued growth, and what happens when the supply of this energy begins to decline on the road to running out. For more than a century, oil has been the engine of growth for a society that delivers an unprecedented standard of living to many. We now take for granted that economic growth is good, necessary and even inevitable, but also feel a sense of unease about the simultaneous growth of complexity in the processes and institutions that generate and manage that growth. As societies grow more complex through the bounty of cheap energy, they also confront problems that seem to increase in number and severity. In this era of fossil fuels, cheap energy and increasing complexity have been in a mutually reinforcing spiral. The more energy we have and the more problems our societies confront, the more we grow complex and require still more energy. Our demand for energy, our technological prowess, the resulting need for complex problem solving and the end of easy oil are all now conspiring to make the end of the industrial age a certainty. The music's still playing, ladies and gentlemen, but the party is over. Well, hello and welcome, Joseph Tainter, and thank you very much for joining us today on LegalizeFreedom.com. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Now, we're here today to discuss, um, in the first instance, your uh, book, which you co-authored, uh, Drilling Down, The Gulf Oil Debacle and Our Energy Dilemma, and also somewhat overlapping with that, um, a much earlier work um, of your own, uh, The Collapse of Complex Societies. And the issues we're going to discuss uh, predominantly concern the energy uh, upon which modern industrial society depends and the major changes in the availability of that energy, which have already begun and which in future will have drastic repercussions for our way of life and basically the entire world as we know it. Now, in drilling down, the, the headline issue was the, the Deepwater Horizon disaster um, of April 2010. Um, but you contend that this is essentially a symptom of our energy dilemma and beyond the aftermath of that and all the usual platitudes trotted out in response at the time, uh, you're, you're contending that there are much deeper lessons to be learned here and much deeper questions posed about our energy future. Indeed, that's true. And it is not simply an energy dilemma. It's a dilemma about the nature of our society and about our way of life. I began my career as an archaeologist and wrote the book in the 1980s, The Collapse of Complex Societies, which you mentioned. And I was, as I was writing that book, I realized that what I was learning was not just about ancient societies, but it had a great deal to do uh, with us and with our future. And so when I began the Gulf Oil book, the Drilling Down book, I realized that much of what I had learned studying ancient societies and particularly how ancient societies would grow complex and what it cost to be complex, that this had implications for understanding why we're looking for oil in places that I refer to as deep, dark, cold, remote, and dangerous, uh, and the costs of doing this and the consequences of doing this. And basically, um, as societies become more complex, they require energy. It takes energy to be a complex system. Uh, if you think of, for example, uh, animal species, uh, insects, bacteria, um, a, a deer or a whale obviously has a much higher metabolic requirement than an amoeba or a bacterium. Uh, to be more complex takes energy, and the same is true of human societies. It takes energy to be complex, to support the kind of society that we are, and it's not just an overall greater amount of energy, but it's more energy per capita so that the only way we can support the complexity that we have in our society today is through highly concentrated fossil fuels, basically fuels that derive from past geological processes. So the book really focuses on not just energy, 
but also on energy and the evolution of complexity in our society and how they're intertwined. Yeah, now the one of the sort of buzzwords in there, the key, the key issues is that of uh, peak oil, which many listeners are probably familiar with, and also um, energy return on energy invested, uh, basically net energy in any equation. And these are things that um, people sometimes, uh, laymen, don't take into account, but they're very, very important in, in this area. They are indeed. And in discussions of future energy, uh, peak oil and energy return on investment, which which those of us who work in this area refer to as EROI, as, as an acronym, uh, these are the fundamental issues. The important issue is not how much oil is still left in the ground. There's really an enormous amount of it left. The problem is that the remaining oil, as I say, or the remaining oil that we're not yet using, uh, as I say, is in places that are deep, dark, cold, remote, and dangerous. And it's very expensive to get at them. It takes energy to get energy so that to get at oil in these inaccessible uh, places that are very difficult, in which it, it's difficult to work, uh, it takes energy in itself. And so what we find in, for example, the United States is that um, in 1940, we could produce oil uh, at a net profit of about 100 to 1, which is to say that for every barrel of oil that we would spend searching for and producing oil, we'd get 100 barrels back. The ratio now is down to about 10 to 1, 12 to 1. Some people compute about 15 to 1. Uh, it's about 18 to 1 worldwide and about 25 to 1 in the Persian Gulf. So you can see the trend is that we're having to spend more and more energy in order to get the energy that we need on a daily basis. Uh, this trend is irreversible, and, and it's going to have enormous consequences in the future. Now, as far as peak oil is concerned, peak oil is the idea that, um, that at some point we will have reached the maximum production of petroleum uh, that we will reach the point where we simply can't produce any more and that production will thereafter le perhaps level off for a while and then start to decline. Uh, it, the problem with peak oil, the challenge with it, is that you can only see it in hindsight. You mm. can only see looking back that, yes, well, in that year we hit peak oil, we haven't been able to increase uh, oil production since year X. Some people think we've already hit peak oil. I'm not fully convinced of that, but it's important to notice that worldwide oil production has not increased since 2005. And so some people think that, in fact, we reached peak oil in 2005. It's going to take a few more years before we know that. Uh, there are, of course, very large discoveries being made, the deep sea discovery off the coast of Brazil, for example. And new technologies are being developed, uh, hydraulic fracturing called fracking to produce oil in, uh, from shale in uh, primarily now in South Dakota, for example, and also in other locations. So it's, it's, not, clear, it's not clear to me whether we've hit peak oil, but certainly, certainly the other factor, declining EROI, that's affecting us directly. And, and you can see that in the fact that... Um, the, the Macondo well out in the Gulf of Mexico, the well that blew out, was situated under a full mile of seawater. Mm. And, and from there, then, they had to drill down through several thousand feet of rock. Uh, it, it's looking for oil in these kinds of places, in these kinds of unconventional places, that drives up <clears throat> not just the monetary cost, <coughs> excuse me, that drives up not just the monetary cost, but also the energy cost. Well, yeah, it's staggering. I mean, talking about the monetary cost initially, uh, we're reading some of the stats in drilling down, um, not only the lengths as they're going to get oil, but the, the, the monetary cost, the Thunder Horse rig was something I'd not heard of. Um, but, I mean, it was, it was a jaw-dropping amount of money uh, spent on that equipment. Yes, indeed. The, 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 the rig that, that drilled the Macondo, well, the Deepwater Horizon rig, I think the figure I've seen for it was something like a billion dollars to build it and five hundred thousand dollars a day to run it, and and it's not the most complex rig. It's not, nor is it the most expensive. It was actually several years old, 
the ones that are coming online now, um, Shell's Perdido rig, for example, are, are even more complex than, uh, the, than the Deepwater Horizon. Well, to put the oil consumption in perspective with regard to um, the Gulf of Mexico, um, correct me if I remembered this <clears throat> excuse me, wrongly from the book, but that once complete, the entire extraction of oil from the Gulf of Mexico will basically power the U.S. for one and a half years. That that may be approximately correct, um, and you see you see arguments along these lines in regard to, for example, increased drilling on the North Slope in Alaska. Um, that uh, that all the oil that's likely to be there will not make that much difference. Although it, it might make a difference in price in the short run, but overall it's a very small fraction of the amount of oil that we use every day. And yet we're forced to go after these more remote and inaccessible and and hard to get at sources that add only small increments to our overall supply. <laughs> 